Hello, my name is Mark Preco, President and Founder of Atom Software, and it's my pleasure today to demonstrate to you how you can easily convert your office to a paperless process. To begin, the normal process is we want to track the client from the time they come through your door or they send you the information all the way through the whole process from stage to stage. So to begin with, if we have a client who's actually physically located in our office, the easiest way to get them checked in is we actually uh, developed a check-in screen. So to eliminate that sign-in sheet, now the client can check themselves in and it can help assist your receptionist with some of the, um, the tasks associated with check-in process. So the client would just enter their social or their I-10, and in this case it's going to welcome back Michelle and because we're linked to the calendar, it says they have an appointment with Mark at 10 o'clock. And then also please see the receptionist to give her your ID to complete the check-in process. So this is a, a way of streamlining the check-in process in your lobby to try to control it and make it easier for your receptionist. So I'm going to move back, check-in screen back. And now on our home page here. So the home page is just a series of office events kind of like a dashboard tracking the return from stage to stage. So the starting point is the lobby. So in this example, we have four sitting in our lobby and there's Michelle right there who just came in. It's gonna track how much time they're in your lobby so you know which one to take first. This example, we have a few that have been here for a while, um, 165 hours, and Michelle here has just been here one minute. but. Also, we'll see, it'll tell us if they have an appointment or if they're just a walk-in or who they have an appointment with. Here we have it with Mark, Michelle, and then up here there was a walk-in, but they requested Mandy, so we put Mandy on here so that Mandy would know to take James back. Um, typically, uh, if you have file folders, you know, this is when a receptionist is going to try to search for the folder. Hopefully, they find it and they can put it in some kind of a, a rack so that you have some kind of organization in your office so you know which one to take next. Um, so a lot of the information that you gather in the file folder because we're trying to eliminate the file folder, we tried to put here in the lobby screen. So for example, how difficult the return is so you, your preparers will know which one they can grab and which one they shouldn't. How many years they've been with you so you can greet this client with the respect they deserve if they're a loyal customer. So in this example, Mar Michelle's been with us 10 years. Tom here is a new client. You can also see if they have any balance due. So Alicia here still owes me $85 and so does Michelle, $85. And you can also take a look and see what they look like prior to coming out and greeting them, just in case you know you don't have the your memory um, is slipping a little bit. And maybe you just don't remember if you're doing 1,000 clients or 500 clients, you can't remember every single one of them. But if they're actually requesting you, You'd like to go out there if there's a few people in the lobby and walk right up to them. So we scan their IDs in so we can actually take a peek before we go out and greet the client. And then the visits here, um, this will tell me if they're coming back for the first time this year or if they've been here several times. So in this James up here, this is actually a third visit for this return year 2014. So I should actually take a peek and see what happened in their previous two visits and not going cold and just take them back. So I could actually see exactly what took place prior, their prior visits. So now if the client was actually just dropping their information off or if they actually mailed the information in, obviously you may not use the self check-in screen, you could still check them in manually and then you then would move them to what we call drop off. So let's just say uh, Alicia here um, is actually going to drop the information off. So I would click on her name, go into her file, and then I switch it from lobby to drop off, not started yet, and I save it. And now on my home page, this is going to track all my drop offs. So in this example, I have seven in drop off. So your preparers, if they're not doing anything, they can just go and, and figure out which one they need to grab next. So if they're all organized by how many days they've been to drop off, it'll track the due date of the return. So you know which one you need to grab. So say if it's an 1120S, the due date's March 15th, it actually would be at the top. Even though it may not have been in there um, as long as some of the other ones, but because it's due sooner than the other ones. So it'll automatically organize 
uh, all your drop-off information. It'll, you can also assign it to a specific preparer if you want. You can make any notes, so if it needs to be done by a specific date. So your preparers can all see this information and then just grab the next one they'd like to take, whatever order you tell them to take them in. But for this demonstration, what I'd like to do is, is if the client was actually physically in my office, and then I'll show you how we move it from stage to stage and how we kind of eliminate the paper at each stage. So in this process to begin with, we've eliminated the file folder. So all the information is actually in Adam and Michelle's file. So I'm gonna walk out and, and greet Michelle because she's here with the appointment for myself. And I also get notified right up here in the right-hand corner. So if I'm actually doing a return or maybe I'm, I'm doing something else in the office and I don't actually see the lobby, up here in the right-hand corner, I actually get notified that my appointment's here. So my 10 o'clock appointment's here, and then the clock is ticking so I can see how long she's actually been sitting in the lobby if I need to wrap it up with another preparer. So I'm going to go ahead and just select Michelle. I'll go out and greet her. And I'm going to move her to from lobby to tax preparation. So we're just moving her along the chain here. I save it. So now she's out of my lobby. So now my prepare, my other preparers will know which one to take next. So now I'm here in tax preparation. If you see here, this is just a, a list of all the different stages in your tax office. And you can customize this to fit your office. So um, if you don't do bank products, obviously you can eliminate some of the waiting on the bank acts. So now I'm going to be down here in tax preparation. I walk back with Michelle. She's going to hand me all her W-2s, her 1099s. And um, the easiest way to do if you have two screens, so you can have Adam on one screen, you can have your tax software on the other. You do the return just like you normally would. But then you're going to start, then you're going to scan the documents in. So you either can scan them at the preparer level or you could scan them, um, have your receptionist do at the front desk. And then you, what you want to do is you want to attach all those, once you digitize those documents, you want to attach them to her file because you don't have a file folder anymore to stick it in. So to do so, you just click on her name go into her file here, and then I'm going to scan the documents. I'm going to scan her W-2s in, and I scan them to a designated folder, and it could be on your server, it could be on your workstation, whichever. Then you just go ahead and grab it. You drag it into your software here, and I'm just going to label it Reviewer Documents, and I save it, and if I have a um, 8879, I can do the same thing. I can print the document out, have them sign it, and I would just do exactly the same, scan it in, then I'm going to grab it, drag it here, and then we have a drop down we call signature documents. I save it. So basically, I, I'm, I'm taking that paper and I'm putting it into Adam because I'm going to give all that paper back to the client when they leave so I don't have anything, no loose documents floating around my office. And then lastly, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and put her tax return and I'm going to give her access to it. So I want to try to eliminate the paper. So I don't even want to print a tax return out for the client. I want them to accept it online um, through my client portal where she can access the tax return either on her desktop, on her tablet, or on her phone. Um, there's many different ways how she can access it. So it's, it's, it's become a lot easier to convince your clients to accept digital tax returns as opposed to paper tax returns because they can access them anytime they want from anywhere they'd like. So to do so, you just PDF the return in your tax software. Again, it's gonna, you're going to designate it to the folder. Here, I'm going to grab it, drag it in here. I'm going to label it tax return. And then all I have to do is give them access to it over here, either full or limited access. And then they can go ahead and access it online through the client portal. So then I save it. And one more thing I wanted to demonstrate is, say the client actually dropped the information, or no, they mailed it in, um, the, the information, or they sent it through the portal. And so you're completing everything in your office when they're located somewhere else physically. So with the 8879, it was always a challenge. How do I get the signature on that tax return, on the, on the 8879? Now you can actually send the 8879 through the portal, and they can electronically sign it through the portal using a, a PIN signature. So again, all I would do is, Drag that 8879, go ahead and put it in here. And then all you have to do is, let me go ahead and do it real quick. Signature documents, you give them access to it over here, and then you check the box, e-sign client, and now the client 
will be prompted to actually sign the return or sign the 8879 on the portal. And let me show you what the portal looks like real quick. So here's a client portal for Michelle Bishop. So she's just going to log in using her social security number and a password to get her into the file. And from within here, she can actually check the status of her return. So whether the return's been accepted or rejected, because we're able to pull EF data in from your tax software. It can even, if she's getting a bank product, even tell her when to come pick up her check in your office. And right here, this is where she can get a copy of her tax return. So here's a 2014. 14 return that I put out there for her so she can view this from anywhere. She can even go back multiple years, go back to 2013, look at documents, 2012 and look at documents. And then right here is this is where she can actually sign her document. So here's 8879, she just clicks on this link. It's going to ask her to type in her name and then a PIN number. And then once she signs it, you then get notified that she just signed the document using a a PIN. So this is an easy way for you to gather signatures on your 8879s as opposed to using the, maybe you mailed it to them, maybe you faxed it to them. So now it's all done in one place and then you get notified as soon as she signs it. She can also send you questions through here. She can upload her W-2s or 1099s through here. She can even make her payment on the portal. So say you put the 8879 out there for her to sign and then you also tell her, go ahead and pay while you're out there. So all she has to do is she can pay with credit card or she can pay with her bank account if she'd like, this e-check. And then she can gather her invoice from here or her receipt, um, schedule an appointment from the portal, update her contact information. So a lot of information they can do from the portal. So it's not just a matter of here's your tax return, it's out there. Uh, because we give so much information they can gather, it's more easy to convince them to go paperless and get their tax return in a digital format as opposed to a paper format. So that's how the client portal works with Adam. Now I'm back in my office here. So I've convinced, I put the W-2s, um, attach them to her file. Um, I put the 8879 out there. Her tax return is out there. Everything's organized in, and it's organized by client by year. So if I ever had to go back to a prior year, say I want to go back to her 2013 and look at her documents, all I do is click on the documents icon. Here's all the documents for 2013. I can go back to 2008. Whatever year I'd like, I have all the all the documents in one place. A lot easier to find something rather than sifting through all the paper in a file folder. So I'll go back to 2014. Let me go back into her file here. So now we've done the return. She's happy with the refund. Now we need to, the preparer needs to log the fee in. Let me delete these real quick. So let's demonstrate how to log the fee in because the preparer now knows the fee. So then we want them to actually put it in here. So it's opposed to printing out a bill and walking it to the cashier and say, okay, here's the fee and then to collect payment. So this is how we would do this. We'd go ahead and log the fee tax prep. Say it's $150. I save it. And I think she had a discount too. Actually, her discount, I believe, was logged in from this refer friend because we track all our referrals. And typically, we give discounts if they have a refer. So we actually, with this refer friend, as opposed to using refer friend slips, we actually track our referrals by linking them directly to the client. In this example, Deborah Case actually referred Michelle in. So now we can actually see how many clients Debbie refers in and then keep track of when we send her payment for all of her referrals. Again, another piece of paper we've eliminated their little refer friend slip. Much more organized to do it this way. Okay, so now we have a current balance of 130 and she has a prior year balance of 85. It looks like there's something in return pickup for her. I could either take care of that now or we could have Michelle take care of it later. So let's in this example say she's gonna pay it later. So now I'm going to move it from tax prep to cashier. So I've done everything. I've prepared the return. Everything's done. She signed everything. Now I'm going to escort Michelle out to our receptionist at the cashier's table to collect payment. Now, if you don't, if your office is a little smaller and you don't have a designated person to collect payment, you know, your preparer can go ahead and collect the payment too. All they're going to do is log the, the payment in here, just like the cashier is. 
So from the home page here, now Michelle's out at my receptionist. So my receptionist is going to click on the cashier link. See, she's got a balance due at 215. And then Michelle says, oh, I'm, not, I'm just going to settle up with my 2014 bill and I'll, I'll handle 2013 later. So uh, the receptionist says it's fine. They just click on their name. Shoots into her file here. Here she can see her current balance is 130. Um, from here, we could actually pay with credit card, just like they could do on the portal, because we're integrated with um, with a credit card processor. And when we do that, it automatically will log the payment in instantly. So there's no payment that she would have to do if we do it with credit card or with the e-check. She could also pay with her bank account information too, and it automatically would log the payment in here, and then Michelle automatically gets a receipt emailed to her. Let's just say she's going to pay with a check. It automatically pre-fill the amount, labels it check, and then I just go ahead and enter the check number here in my notes field, save it. So now her current balance due is zero. I could print out a receipt right here for Michelle. I mean, yeah, for Michelle, or I could email her, or she could access it on the portal too. The receipt's also on the portal automatically. So from here, the cashier is done. They're going to move it to reviewer. You know, and say thanks for your business, Michelle. We'll see you next year. So now the cashier's done. Now it's up to the reviewer to take over from there. Now that preparer that just did Michelle's return, their job then would be go to back to the lobby, look to see who's next, and grab the next one in line and take them back and do the whole process over again. So now I'm on my reviewer, whoever's going to review the return, all they're going to do is they're going to have two monitors and pull the tax software up on one. They're going to go ahead and look at the documents of Michelle right here inside of her file and then view them on the other one the w2s 1099s make sure everything was entered incorrectly and once everything looks good they're going to go ahead and move it to ef ready now if there are any notes say they found an issue something wasn't entered incorrectly they could go ahead and make a note right here they could assign it to a specific preparer letting them know what happened and if it needs to stay in reviewer until it gets corrected then it would just stay there and nothing would get e-filed well this next example let's just say everything looked good we're going to go ahead and move it to the next stage, which is EF Ready. We save it. And all along this way, we're tracking who's touching this return. So if I just click on Show All Events right here, this is going to show me, you know, when Michelle checked in, who took her back to tax prep, she went to cashier, who took the money, who reviewed the return, who moved it to EF Ready. And if there's any notes along the way, I can see all this. So it's so much easier than trying to track all this stuff in a file folder. So now I'm at EF Ready. I can see I have one ready to be transmitted. So I'm going to check the box, Michelle, to transmit her return. I'm going to also check it over in my tax software to e-file it. Then I just hit Send over here in Atom. It's going to automatically move it down to awaiting IRS acknowledgments. And now because we're able to pull in the EF data from your tax software, so now we actually can see acknowledgments over here in Atom. So it makes it much easier to make sure it gets moved to the right stage once it's been accepted. Whereas say I thought I e-filed the return, but I really didn't, then these would be blank and they would stand out like a sore thumb. And I know, oh, I must have mistakenly not e-filed that return. So I have my acknowledgments here. Everything looks good. It was accepted. Um, if this example, she was actually going to get direct deposit of her refund, then it would go the status would go from awaiting hours acknowledgments to complete because there's nothing more you need to do. She's just going to now wait for her refund to come. Now, if it's going where we're actually going to print a check, then it would then go down to awaiting an IRS to fund the bank, and we're going to wait till the IRS releases the money, and then we print a check in our office. So, all depends on how she's expecting her refund. Now, let's just say that uh, let's just say Michelle during the tax preparation process she wasn't able to complete the return because she was missing a w-2 so then it would be the preparer's job instead of moving it to cashier like they did they should move it to pending because we're waiting on more information from the client so if i'm inside her file here and now i'm back to the tax preparer so i would have been up in tax prep i'd move it to down what's called pending client i save it and adam's going to automatically tell this preparer you need to leave a note you need to let me know why it's impending. So typically, if you had a file folder, then you'd have to somehow write a little sticky note or somehow document the file as to why you moved it and put it in a file cabinet for pending. This is much more 
easy to stay organized. So here I'm just going to click the edit pencil. We actually have some predefined notes set up for common reasons why it's impending. So waiting on W2s, I can just stamp date it. It'll make my note. I save it. Now my file is documented. So if Michelle were to call back later and say what's going on with my return, the first thing the receptionist is going to do is try to locate Michelle's file. So normally, if you had your paper files, you'd be going to the file cabinet and hope to find it there. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and pull her information up. I see it's in pending. I can click on my pending status link. She me right into her file. I get to see the whole history of Michelle from the time she walked through my door to tax prep right down here. And I, I would say, oh, Michelle, do you remember Mark's still waiting on a W-2 from you? That's why we didn't complete your return. She'd say, oh, that's right. I forgot all about that. So the receptionist then should document the file is to, to let her know we reminded Michelle. And then she might give us a date as to when she's coming back. So this is where you'd put your note here. Now, because it is so easy for your clients to forget to bring that information back, and then you end up calling them and reminding them. So what we did is we tried to automate that process, and now Adam will actually do all that for you. Now, they won't actually make the physical phone call, but we can send an email and a text automatically out to the client. So right here over in the far right-hand column, we call these client notifications. So we have it set that every 10 days, Michelle is going to get an email and a text sent to her reminding her to send it, to bring the information in. Just a friendly reminder. So you can customize that, whatever message you'd like. And you can also set how many days you'd like it to go out. Or you can make it instant. I could send it right now if I like just by clicking this send instant notification. Then she automatically got an email and a text sent to her with whatever message that we have pre defaulted in there. So you can do that in ever, any stage along here. So that comes in handy on pending client or maybe return pickup. You want to remind the client, you know, tax return still sitting in here. Need you to come in and um, sign and pay. So let me go back to the home page here. So basically all this, these office events on our home page, these used to be similar to file cabinet drawers that we had when we had a file folder and it'd move it from stage to stage. So whatever you like to keep track of, you can just list it here. And again, you get to customize this. So I have check pickup, return pickup, extensions filed. Um, you know, sometimes people get up and leave on us. We like to track why they walked. Maybe our the refund was too low or the fees were too high. Whatever you think is important, you can easily track. So, and it's all in their file, easily to retrieve and see in one place. Now let's just say, um, so that's kind of how we, we eliminated our file folder for tax preparation. Now we used to have like something for phone slips. So we used to have sticky notes. So more paper, we want to get rid of those sticky notes too. So say Michelle called in and say, I want Mark to give me a call back. So the first thing our reception is going to do is, is pull up Michelle's file. Here it is right here. So again, I can see a lot of information. I can see she still has a balance due with me. It's in pending client. And she says, just to have Mark give me a call. I got a question for him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead to my notes page here inside my file. I'll click on the note icon. And I'm going to go ahead and document this phone message. And again, I have a predefined note quickly so I don't have to type it out. Please call this client back. And then I'm going to sign it to Mark because that's who she'd like to speak to. I save it. So now I've documented the file. This is something that you would normally probably just use a sticky note. So there really was no way of documenting a file. I don't know if you put it in a file folder or how you did it or if you have another piece of software to try to track this information. So we have it all put in one place. So here it is right here. Now for Mark, what he sees on his homepage here, I have one new assigned task. So I'm going to click on this, see what's going on. There it is, Michelle. Please return call as soon as possible. I click on the view icon. That's going to be shoot me into her file where the note was recorded. And yes, I see the note, what I'm supposed to do. But on top of that, I can kind of get an idea what's going on with Michelle's file before I actually return her call. So I can see it's in pending status, waiting on a W-2. Uh, I can see she's already paid. I can see that she has an outstanding balance for 13. So I, I got a kind of a good idea why she might be calling me before I go ahead and pick up the phone and call her. And then I have all her phone information right up here. Here's her contact information. Here's her address. So I have all the information I need in one place. So it makes it really nice and easy and it's very organized as opposed to a client folder. Go back to my home page here. 
just want to kind of summarize quickly. So hopefully based on this demonstration, you can see it, it is very easily um, to convert to a paperless process, to remove those file folders, to remove those phone slips or whatever other things you're using to track um, referral slips. You know, we don't have those anymore. It's all in one place, all kind of automated to make your life simpler. So if you'd like any more information on how to convert your office to a paperless process, please give us a call. We'd love to talk to you. And we can even set up a one-on-one -on -one demonstration where um, you might have specific questions for your office. So I thank you again for your time. And I hopefully with this demonstration, you see how easily it is to convert your office to paperless. Thank you.